Howdy, everybody. It is Wednesday, November 3rd, 2010, and this is Day 9 Daily number 211. Uh, in less than exciting news, it is Wednesday, which is normally Friend Day Wednesday, but all the people I had lined up are all traveling to MLG Dallas right now, so we will not be having a Friend Day Wednesday today. <sighs> So we're going to be doing it of a fine individual by the name of Liquid Hey Pro is a replay that he submitted against one of the top Korean players, STX, uh, on a map called Jungle Basin that you may know or not if you have ever played StarCraft 2 at all. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Today's just going to be a usual sort of standard hardcore analysis, looking at a game, talking about why the Terran did some oh-so-great things, what Zerg was doing well. Uh, yeah, good old normal junk. In exciting news, this weekend I am traveling to Dallas, Texas to do the MLG Circuit Championship where they actually have expanded it to 128 players and will be casting for three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so tune in, MLGPro.com. Also, I'll be going to DreamHack in Schweden on the 21st and we'll be there through uh, Monday. So I'll be there for a full week. Yeah! Or the 22nd, 22nd to the 30th. So if you're from Sweden, I would love to wave at you and high-five and do all sorts of good jazz. Dream hack. So yeah, that's all. That's all I have to say. I'm going to go directly into the daily. That seems good. Yeah, starting it in the top corner. Oh, now I remember the other thing I wanted to say. Um, I, of course, wanted to adjust my window. Yeah, there we go. That should be absolutely perfect. I love revealing the veil. You get to see exactly how Day9 adjusts his windows live. Yes. But there's not going to be a Fun Day Monday. There's not going to be a Newbie Tuesday next week. There might be a Friend Day Wednesday, but because I'm traveling so much, uh, I'm actually not having the time to sort through a whole bunch of replays for Monday and Tuesday. So they're going to be back. Don't worry. Calm down. I have all sorts of devious things planned for Fun Day Monday and Newbie Tuesday, so it will not be a tradition that I'm burning to the ground right now, but it's just on hold because I'm sleepy. So now, now we can continue back into the game. Also, no show tomorrow, no show on Sunday, technically, but of course, I will be live at MLGPro.com. So, in the top left corner, we have Hey Pro, who is the Red Zerg. In the bottom left corner, we have STX, who is an insanely highly rated Terran player. If you don't believe me, just go to SC2Ranks.com to look at all the current worldwide global rankings of StarCraft II, and you'll realize, wow, STX is really, 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 really good. On Jungle Basin, there's the most notable uh, ramp right here with a backdoor natural, which is very cool. There's destructible rocks, but... Unlike on Blistering Sands, these are not really hugely terrifying destructible rocks because the distance between the destructible rock and attacking your front is so huge. And defensively, the distance between them is very, very short. So as long as you do good basic spotting, you're going to be okay, right? That is something I really, really like. Notice how I said that. If you have good spotting, that is if you're looking at your minimap very well, this will not be an issue, and that makes me happy because it's another way of saying if your out-of-game resource of having a lot of attentiveness is good, then that will affect your in-game quite a lot, and that's something that we like in our sophisticated games. But for the most part, um, turning the sound back on, the, the, front, uh, the front door, the fact that it's very short, means that most people are going to favor early expanding. We have STX doing the usual barracks right now. And this is also pretty common on a map where you're almost certain that people are going to be doing some sort of very, very big sort of, um, um, what am I talking about? This is very, very common if you know your players are going to be doing some sort of big early expand strategies that can potentially be devastating. Like, hey, pro's up at 15 food. He wants to be throwing down that hatch, but we're not going to let him because we're going to build an engineering bay. This is a very common little move. And I think that what hey, pro does is the correct thing. Not the nibbling away here. The fact that he moved this drone with 300 total minerals, saw the block, and then said, okay, I'll make a spawning pool. The worst thing you can ever do is to react to something that isn't happening in the game. And people tend to do this where they'll lose a game to, um, or they'll get Engineering Bay blocked, and they'll be like, oh, how frustrating. All right, well, I'll just build a pool. And then they'll lose the game. And they'll play another game where they get, their, they get Engineering Bay blocked, and they'll lose that game. And then they'll just go, you know what, I'm tired of these annoying ass engineering bay blocks. I will now only ever 14 pool just to stop that engineering bay block. And that's actually really, 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 really bad. Because um, honestly, 
Why are you trying to block something that you don't know if it's happening or not? Very, very important that you not try to prepare for something just that you find annoying. It's okay to account for it, but you want to be doing littler changes in your play. Don't forget how great early expanding can be. And if someone, in all honesty, if someone is throwing down this engineering bay, that's a lot of money, so it's okay if your spawning pool is a little delayed. If we're looking at STX's base, he hasn't even gotten the gas. He's just now getting his orbital command. He can hardly even afford to throw down another supply depot. A lot gets in the way if you have 125 minerals missing early. You can get them back if you cancel. It's the fact that it is missing. Yes. All right. So he is continuing to send his drones away. Good boy. Very good. He is just destroying that. Excellent, gonna try to knock that down. Obviously wanna kill all the SCVs, fantastic. And he finally opens it back up. And in the meantime, hey Pro is doing something very, very smart. He is just continuing on with his usual style of play. He's getting, um, he's gonna be getting, you know, Zergling speed up pretty soon. We can see he has 100. He is getting his queen. And this Roach Warren, I think, is the one little adjustment that, um, that is a direct result of that of that engineering bay going down. Idra, if any of you have listened to the State of the Game podcast, says that it, of course, wounds him any time a Zerg player does anything with a Roach opening. But in this particular circumstance, even though I know a lot of people would love their Zerglings right at the start, the fact that he's getting the Roach Warren kind of makes sense if he's really far behind on Larva. Because if he just makes two or three Roaches, that's a very inexpensive Larva army. Ignoring money, it's only two or three Larva. If to get the same kind of defense, you'd have to get 8 to 10 lings. So um, you really, really want to make absolutely certain that you're not wasting that sort of larva when you're low on it. So I think that that roach warn is pretty wise. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, talk a little bit more about STX's play for this early stage. What he's going to be doing is he's going to be just continuing to make marines. He's going to be early expanding. Very smart. He's going to be double gassing. A lot of people think that double gassing is something crazy or unorthodox because most of the time people are getting one gas early and one gas later. So this I'm not really too concerned about. It's not the biggest deal in the world. He's getting his tech lab very quickly. He's going to be expanding. And what we're actually going to see is that hey Pro starts to pull quite far ahead. Quite far ahead. He's just continuing to build his hatchery. Uh, we see a bunker going down for safety. We see... Yes. Uh, everything seems pretty reasonable at this point in time, right? People are seeing a little bit of obnoxiousness from Terran, but then he's going to chill back, play nicely and normally, and then he's going to expand with a dapper lad. Meanwhile, hey, pro, he wanted to get this he wanted to get this hatchery up. He makes a roach warn just in case. He makes it. He's not really making any roaches. Even the unit counting station, we see no roaches are made. And he is now making drones. Very good boy. Good, good little Zergi. Mm. Uh, and STX is doing something that I think most people are kind of aware of. They are throwing down a uh, factory. They want to begin getting that tank production up early. They, uh, there's the stim pack going down. And this actually, I think, is a big mistake that a lot of players do, right? They try to get all their fancy upgrades as fast as humanly possible because they know that they're good, right? They know that they're fantastic. But you want to have them at a good time. The best example of this is people who immediately when the factory finishes get the siege tank in the siege mode. Why? Why, damn it? Why do you do that? If you're not attacking or if you're not really worried about dying, you don't need to get the siege mode. I understand if you made three marines and then you're making tanks and the only defense you have is tanks, yeah, get the siege mode. That's going to help. But if you're planning on doing a giant marine tank timing push... Delay the siege mode. Delay it. Delay it. My voice is still a little bit gone from Phoenix, Arizona. But I will try to hit those high octaves for educational value. Delay the damn ass siege mode. I don't know if that's a word, but it is now because it is so important that you delay it. And then I say weird phrases so that way it really sticks. Stim. You're getting stim. Great. Stim's a good upgrade, but you don't really need it for the push. Maybe on, or you don't really need it until you push. Sorry, you don't need it until you begin the push. Good, good, good. Maybe on a map like Zelnaga Caverns, you really need fast stims, so it's easier to defend your very vulnerable natural. But here, you have this tiny ramp. You built a bunker. You built a bunker. You're totally defended, and STX is getting a very fast stim. 
bad boy. Very bad STX. I'm talking to both of my players today like they are a very small dog. I'm like, it's a good boy. A very bad boy. Oh, what a little guy. All right, well, he's building, he's building Marauders like a little guy. Same time, getting the tank down. Great. Now, one thing that always concerns me, almost always, is I'm going to see someone do a style like STX is doing. And I'm going to say, where's the pressure? Where's your opponent getting freaked out? I'm going to go over and look at Hey Pro. Wow, that's a lot of drones. That's a lot of drones. He's teching. He's creeping. He has two queens. He's banelinging. Not even really many units out for Zerg. And STX uh, is doing this. Okay, great. I was thinking he's actually going to be going for Banshees. Yeah, he's going to be trying to get some sort of ultra-fast Banshee. That's fantastic. But he doesn't. He's instead going straight for a Viking and tanks. Okay. Notice that the siege mode's getting delayed. Still. Okay, Stim's done. What are we doing with Stim? What are we doing? Are we doing anything with Stim? I don't see anything getting done with Stim. I don't see anything getting done. Oh, this upgrade starting that very early. That's awesome because that takes forever to finish. If we're doing a fast push, we want to get that bad boy going down right away. Oh, nifty. And, and, you know, even these are kind of in a different class of their own because of the fact that if you start plus one fast, you either want to make sure there's a timing push there or, 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 or that you're getting plus two fast and that you have some timing with plus two, right? Just thinking about the timing of upgrades. That's really the big focus of this daily is looking at STX and talking a lot about how the upgrades relate to your initial push because this is not good. This is not good. No Siege Mode getting research. That's good. That's very, 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 very good. That is totally, totally awesome. Totally, totally awesome. Uh, 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 there's the Siege Mode getting thrown down. I kind of understand that a little bit better because we don't have our bunker anymore. But I mean, honestly, honestly, I just want to emphasize like crazy the Deer Protosses, Deer Terrans, and even Deer Zergs. Make sure you're not getting those upgrades for no reason. For Zerg, for instance, getting Baneling Speed, very smart. I have no idea when the Terran's going to push out. But if you're Terran, it's bad if you're saying, I have no idea when I'm going to push out, so I may as well get these upgrades because I am uncertain as to when my gumption will surface. No, just, you, you, you have the timing. Terrans and Protosses are the ones who have to timing push the Zerg. Yeah, that's a good one. Terrans are generally the ones that have to timing push the Protoss as well in this game. Um, sometimes vice versa. So, um, one thing that is a little bit concerning to me is um, that we're not getting our barracks started early enough. That actually is the big reason I suggest delaying these upgrades. You heard me just say, oh yeah, don't get these unless you're right about to push. And sometimes people will go, okay, yeah... And the reasoning is because you want to get your money on other structures. People will say Stimpak is only 100 to 100. Siege mode's cheap. Stimpak's cheap. Combat shield's cheap. But you know what? Barracks cost 150. And if you get, like, two barracks with reactors, that's actually also pretty damn cheap. So that's why rearranging these things that seem tiny, like, oh, one little upgrade, are actually pretty, pretty significant in the long run. What, what are all the significant there's the two reactors going down. Here's the double um, medevac stuff going down. Oh, this is kind of cool, getting a really fast armory. It looks like we're getting double upgrades very fast. And I was initially watching this and actually reeling quite a bit because notice, notice how there's all these conflicting things going on. I'll actually back up um, to right when these medevacs are going to pop out. Okay, now look at the money right now. Oh, hey, look at this. 650, 100. We can't get two more medevacs out. We're actually not making tanks right now. We need 300 gas to be able to make tanks and to be able to make the medevacs. Uh, we're high on minerals. We should have been getting this other stuff. In a sense, we're looking at STX doing not the smoothest, not the best opening in the world. And these are the sort of things that um, I really want to emphasize to people to be watching out for themselves when they're just saying, well, I know upgrades are good and I know medevacs are good and I know tanks are good, so I'll just get all of those. Well, if you have zero gas and you're not building out of them, then this is a big issue. We want to look for big bumps like this. And it looks like STX is doing uh, quite well. Hey Pro is doing something I think that is smart, expanding to both sides of the map, spreading himself out. I would definitely suggest he gets a third queen, just to spread creep. But again, focusing a little bit more on the Terran buddy this game, as I have been recently quite obsessed, excuse me, with Zerg. 
Some turrets coming down, the reactor's coming up. Finally, you know, notice how we're having a surplus of money. If we had delayed this stim and combat shield and delayed this siege mode, we could have built these barracks way earlier and begun making marines way earlier and had an overall much bigger push. We've completely stopped medevac, pr medevac production. In the unit counting station, we have two medevacs. Do not get a reactor star port. Make two medevacs and then stop making units. I do like this plus one, plus one. Uh, I think that's very, very cool. This is tank plus one. I'm, I think it's, uh, in general, obviously upgrades are great, but I'm still a little bit kind of, hmm, about it um, at this phase of the game, because again, it's really eating into our ability to do this other stuff. If we, for instance, just had these barracks and this factory and then a starport without a reactor, I think I'd be much more reasonably behind this air weapon, or this um, vehicle weapon. And STX getting his second factory. It's very important that you do the right thing in terms of getting there. Because look at these resources. See how Haypro is at like 128 and STX is at, oh wow, 142 and STX is at 120. This is the direct result of things kind of going down in the wrong order. Now to be honest, getting two factories, getting a reactor starport, getting a lot of barracks, getting double upgrades. These are all good things, right? This is a good look. If he had something like 15 barracks on one base, I would go, yeah, cut your barracks down. If he had 10 barracks on two bases and three factories, I'd go, yeah, you need to cut those unit producing structures down. If he had three barracks and one factory on two bases, I'd say, yeah, let's pump it up a little bit. The numbers he's going for are good numbers to go for. But now STX needs to rearrange those things. And again, the rearrangement of when you get the barracks, when you get the stim, when you get the, the, the factory is what we call strategy, right? That's what makes this game hard. Terran aren't good because he's, oh, you should whip out some barracks. There's no problem. You should get some barracks. Some barracks is good. It is this ordering, and Liquid Hay Pro is actually doing his ordering quite a bit better. We're seeing his money low, he's getting the upgrades he wants, he's getting good amounts of larva. His energy's getting a pinch high on these guys, but, you know, getting these double expands up, transferring. STX now beginning to do some dropping action, great. But I'm actually staying intentionally on this resource counting station, because I want everyone to be aware of how quite far behind STX is in DOS food count. And again, another lone factory that ain't doing much. Uh, and the upgrades getting pretty, pretty damn good. Now, hey, Pro is in, in somewhat of an awkward situation, because he is trying to... Um, he's going to be trying to keep two expansions alive, and basically hope that he has, like, one and a half of those two working. And by that, I mean he wants to have, like, one functional and one kind of battered. And then it'll add up to being uh, in the positive. Because, honestly, if you just make one of these expansions, they're both kind of vulnerable. So a lot of Zergs like to do this. But I'm taking the break right now because I want to distinguish between the two phases of the game. STX is going to do some amazing junk later on in the game. Right? It is currently 7.30 my time, so spent a good 20 minutes on the first half. I'm going to still tell you right now, the second half is amazing, great tactical magicianry by STX. He's just thinking well, he's placing things well, his macro's pretty damn good. We're going to see those plus one, excuse me, plus two, plus two upgrades become awesome. But, when people watch this replay, this is, can be downloaded at sc2rep.com. I was thinking it's at sc2replay.com as well. If you if you download this replay, a lot of people watch it and they'll just go, Oh, cool Terran, I want to be like Terran too. And STX rewatches himself and is just going to go, I love me. And hey, pros, still going to be a little sad. But the problem is that this first half of the game, people are neglect a lot, a ton, an insane amount. STX will neglect it because he'll be going, oh man, I did so great in the late game. People who watch it and get excited about it, look at that fancy stuff at the end. But no one spends enough time looking up to this point saying things like, why did Stim and Combat Shield go down so early if we didn't move out three minutes until after both were finished? You know, why did we get siege mode so quickly when we didn't even really need it except right here when we moved out? Why did we get that so soon? These barracks felt late. This starport felt fast. These barracks felt late. These upgrades were, were actually very nicely timed, but still, they constricted our gas. These are all the little things. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, we're not going to mention it ever again. And we're going to watch STX take a beating. <laughs> hey, Pro is uh, doing a smart thing. 
uh, generally it's very good in a lot of these circumstances to pull your banelings back. That's just a good little bit of micro. If you have a small force of units that just sort of plops themselves down, uh, pull everything back that, that, that is uh, a baneling. We're going to see STX move forward here. And now STX is in a mildly awkward spot. He is going to be moving up here. I, By the way, I think that this is the correct place to rally. Not here, but right here, because you block your entrance to your ramp, and if anything comes here, then you can sprint up. If you're up here, things can waltz freely into your main and cause pain. So now we're going to see STX begin his slow push. Here is some very, very good tacticianry. Notice that he is going to the side of the low ground and then scanning up, or even sometimes medevacking up. You can... Uh, the main reason this is good is it keeps his army close to the expansion. Always want to do that. Again, hey, little stuff like not building a fortress, not sending any units there. That is less than good. We're going to see Hey Pro have a little bit of attack disorganization here, but, you know, he ends up cleaning it up pretty nicely. And what STX is doing that is quite good here is he has just taken the loss uh, of units. This is actually somewhat of a, uh, you know, less than ideal situation. You know, you just lost almost your whole army. But, again, the reason that I love this mix of unit-producing structures, again, if he was macroing well, this would be a little bit better. The reason I love this mix of structures is because, hey, now we have another little nice force again. QXC said this very, very nicely in the Friend Day Wednesday that he was on, where he said that Marines and Marauders work very well in small numbers. So if I'm trading armies and keeping his numbers small, I'm going to be in great, great, great shape. SDX continuing to make tanks. I think a very good transition for the later stages of the game is to get extra tanks. Uh, an extra factory to be able to make stuff. So we're going to see him now just begin moving up here. Now, a good question is why move here? Why move up to this location? Uh, a lot of people, I think one of the big, big issues people struggle with once they're good at macro and they now have an army, they're just, okay, well, attack, and they just like go for the main for no reason, or they'll, even worse, they'll push towards an expo and kill it, and there's like another expo nearby, and they'll just come back to the center, and then attack the main a little bit, back off, and attack somewhere else a little bit, it's really bad. Um, so we always want to be asking ourselves, why attack like this? So I'm actually going to go to the STX cam. Uh, notice that he did a few really good things. Look, he scanned here. He sees that the infestors are all kind of pulled back here. All right, great. And actually, if we look at the whole map, there's a lot of units over here at the side. Units are positioned over here. He just throws down a few scans. And this, again, is something that people never really look for. If you're watching a replay, you just kind of have vision of everything. You have no idea that scans are being thrown down here. You're often unaware of, oh my goodness, this El Naga Tower is being thrown down here. Rewatch the replay with vision, and then you'll kind of realize, my god, those Terrans actually don't spend as much on scan, or excuse me, as much on muling as I would have thought. It's mostly, 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 mostly scans. Uh, in fact, Gretorp is kind of notorious for spending a ton of his stuff on scans. And there, of course, the tanks doing a good bit of damage. And what's very nice about a lot of this tank placement is that uh, it kind of delays, so you can end up picking off this hatch. I'm a little bit torn on whether we, we should actually be sacking those tanks, but just dashing up here and doing damage with having some defense in the planetary fortress here. And of course, again, this rally point is magnificent. How are his upgrades doing? They're not doing so well. Again, part of me wants to say, why go so fast for 2-2 if you're not going to be getting 3-3 so quickly? And I also like would like to give Heypro a, a lot of credit for uh, his general strategy here. It's quite a smart decision to be going like Roach and Fester, Ling Bane Ling the way he is, because you can fungal growth so many medevacs while you're uh, expanding to these two locations. I do think that Heypro could have had a second hatch up a little bit earlier. His money's high, so he's getting an Ultralis Cavern, but if he'd had another hatch and delayed the Ultra Cavern, this would have stayed alive. So STX is going to continue to position things very nicely up here. By his Planetary Fortress, STX, oh yeah, Macroing, is he going to keep upgrading? There, now he's going to keep upgrading, and oh yeah, I'm starting to see now, yeah, I can actually produce out of this double, uh, this double reactor starport. But again, you're noticing that, oh my goodness, is he ever low on gas, you know? Oh, wow, the infantry weapon, he can't even get the infantry armor. Uh, if he's making uh, tanks out of everything, the end medevacs, he's going to be dead broke. You should really consider getting a starport with no reactor. 
why not give it a shot see how it feels we'll end up checking it out pretty soon now here again is uh, more really important stuff this is super important because most Terrans get to this point and they say hey I'm winning <laughs> perfect and then they'll get lazy but what we're gonna see STX do is this is actually very very key range that he's doing I'm gonna select these siege tanks just to make it explicit as we select these, okay, great. Here is the the fringe range of killing going on by the siege tanks, and notice how this unit moves in uh, relation to these two semicircles of the siege tank. He's darting back and forth, but whoa, he actually really this is the first step that he has taken beyond that line. He is staying quite close to his tanks and sending out small troops to pick off these infestors. You can do the same with banelings even, such as landing a viking and a bunch of banelings having them self-detonate. Tanks are still being very well spread out. He's now begun to rally up here, and I actually don't like this. I still think that this should be the good rally point. That's still the money rally point. He's going to begin poking forward relatively slowly with tanks, because notice that Hey Pro is still actually doing quite well in the money department. Uh, now pulling everything back, not splitting them up individually, that's not so good, because if we made an arc here, we could have kept those two tanks alive. But still, the overall caution with which he advances forwards is exactly the way you want to do it. And meanwhile, as we just glance at the minimap, we see that Hey Pro is expanding more and more and more, because Hey Pro is what we call a very good Zerg player. That is the correct way to be playing the Zergies at this point in time. And in the meantime, we see that the plus two tank damage is going down. That's always good. Ah, had some delicious, delicious treats. Now, a reasonable question, I think, is why is he not darting over here to attack this expansion? Why is, uh, you know, he not darting over here to attack this expansion? Really, in all honesty, this is such a key expansion to just have dead. I think the big reason he's going for it is that it's the easiest one to push of everything. That, honestly, is one of the most undervalued lines of thinking. I wonder if you've ever done this, where you have made a big army of, like, tanks and marauders, marines, or even, let's say, your Protoss, you've made your big, the, like, the, the, the Colossus Ball, as Idra calls it. And, and you just go, okay, well, I could kill this expansion, but, oh, yeah, there's a lot of tech structures in his main. I will cross-map to do that, but, huh, he did make an Ultralisk Cavern over at this one, and gold certainly are important. Well, I guess, I guess I'll guess i go for the main this time, because that's where all his tech structures are. Like, nine times out of ten, the best one to attack is the closest one. Really, it's, it's easy, it's close... Yeah, why not, you know? If you're going to do guaranteed... Again, the idea of guaranteed damage. Part of the reason people always focus on killing workers when they're in someone's base and not depots or add-ons or buildings or the command center itself is because workers have really low hit points, so it's really guaranteed to do permanent damage. If you bring a Nexus to half health, you've literally done zero damage. If you've killed three workers, you've done three workers' worth of damage. And if you can attack two possible locations, which one are you more likely to put the herd on? The closest one, because you get there the fastest. Yeah! So I think this is very, 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 very smart, and still he's going to be quite cautious in terms of advancing forward. Pulling back a lot, letting these tanks take the damage, as tanks are very good at taking the damage, and our poor, sad, frowning little mariners are not so good. Notice leaving the tanks up. I think this is very, very important. Very important. You want to poach forward with some units, small numbers of units to do, if you're in one of these sort of uh, positionings, and you want to still have room to micro back. Notice that these tanks are still siege. Siege tanks do absurd amounts of damage. And we're going to see STX scoot a little farther forward, but not that much farther forward. In fact, for any of you who, um... For any of you who didn't get the chance to tune into the EG's Masters Cup, uh, the replays you can find at djweet.blip.tv, I want everyone to go find the replay of Slush against Spades on Delta Quadrant. Spades moved out with a very nicely timed, well macroed big mech army, and then tried to go for the money shot. He tried to walk all of his units to the perfect location, excuse me, and then siege up. You don't have that luxury when you're against a really good player. It's totally reasonable to siege up and spread out on the way there and then begin moving forward and back with those mobile units, the Hellions, or in this case, the Marines and the Marauders. Yeah, this is so fantastic. 
And notice the dedication with which STX pushes to this expansion. He's not sending anything to this expo that's vulnerable. He's not sending anything to this expo that's vulnerable. In other words, he's not spreading his units too thin and ending up losing a big advantage that he has. He's just very carefully poking forward. And then let's see how he does this. All right, now this I actually dislike. Um, this can be a little dangerous, hooking over like that. Um, having these units spread out like that, that's not so good. And notice how he's just sort of sending stuff to the money location. And uh-oh, three units. Three units for Zerg get picked off. See how see how different that looked and felt? We're actually going to rewatch that one more time because that is so damn important. We're going to watch the last few minutes of the push uh, against this expansion. Yeah, look, he has the tank sieged up. We can even double time it. Yeah, see, he's slowly reinforcing it. There's a forward motion to it. There's no roundabout in this. There's, he's pushing in a line directly from his main to here. It's, again, a straight path so he can reinforce it. Notice that a lot of these tanks cannot hit the hatchery. No big deal. This is very cautious pushing. You can let those mobile units do it. Oh, look, he has time to pull back. The reason he has these sieged up so long, yes, perfect. He can do the permanent damage. Don't forget how important it is to keep your units all together. Now, what would be the best thing to do right now would be to pull back to here and then to swing back around here. Or to take these units and send them right here and intentionally send these units down and then left. But I'm actually quite curious to see how he does it. Well, let's actually do this really slow. He just sort of boxes them in, right? Look, if I do the control group one, yeah, look at that, control group one. I'm just gonna select you guys. Welcome to control group one, control group two. Dear tank, welcome to control group two. Guys, go here. Oh, this is so terrible because you know what happens to these new additions to control groups one and two? They're free, they're free. Uh-oh, oh my goodness. Now this, this is a very small force of not that many circlings, but notice none of the tanks are sieged up because he's trying to sprint to the money location. He's not carefully plodding his way forward. You can plod your way forward really, really quickly, but you still need to be careful. Because look at these special additions. Yeah, we lost a tank, we lost two or three units. That adds up over time. Oh, here's another tank that's getting thrown away because STX is being sloppy with the positioning. Oh no! And the only time this starts getting better is when STX just kind of calms down. And actually begins doing this. Yeah, look, now this is scary for Haypro to go push. Because there's Siege Tank sieged up, a mobile Marine Marauder army nicely spread out. And hey, this is awesome. This is really, really good. Um, often when you are clearly doing a ton of damage somewhere and a lot of his focus is consumed. Um, this is actually one of the hardest things to do. Little tiny attacks like that are really, really, really good. Um... We can clearly see that this is a good thing because of the food differential. Hey Pro's at 100, STX is at 150, so we know that most of Zerg's units are looking pretty uh, clustered together. But you know what? Rather than try to just mimic it blindly, let's go take a look at the STX vision cam. We're gonna hit back, we're gonna hit back. Do -do -do -do. Yeah, we certainly have gone over this part several times in a row. Why? Because it's super damn friggin' important. Super damn friggin' important time. Alright, so here's right when the expansion's dead. I'm just gonna kinda look around at the minimap. Oh, STX is kind of aware of the units over here because of this little vision advantage that he has. He has this uh, watchtower health. Alright, great, great. So here is more units kinda streaming out. Now we wanna see if there's any sort of motivation behind this attack. For instance, a scan here would be good and a scan there. But instead, hey Pro act, or excuse me, STX actually just sends some guys over here. This is, uh, okay, now that I've seen this, I can actually tell you that this is not the smartest idea. He didn't scan here, he didn't scan there. That's actually one of the fastest ways to throw away units. To just go, certainly hope he doesn't have anything there. Incidentally, it looks good. Incidentally, it looks like STX master of being all over the place at once. In STX's mind, he probably was going, well, I've been really vicious hitting this expansion, and then I've been really vicious down here. This probably is under-defended. That, that's reasonable, but there, there's a few little things that are like literally free to do, such as sending a unit here 
and then putting a scan here or literally just sending one unit here and that's all you have to do that's great but either way one thing that i really love about stx is that um after he killed this expansion after he took out this key really close expansion he starts abusing the fact that Zerg has some stuff over here and some stuff over here. He's sending units over here because there's no way that Haypro can defend both at once. Haypro has to defend one or the other. Again, because uh, Zerg is spread out. For example, if let's say this expansion never existed and STX was pushing up here. Uh, or excuse me, let's say this expansion never existed, and STX was pushing up here in the middle, and then he did this exact same counterattack to this expansion at the right. Well, Zerg is going to say, okay, well, this expansion is close to dying, but I can fungal growth delay. I can send units here, kill this, come right on back, and then deal with my problem here. If the expansions are close together, it actually becomes worse off trying to do little pickings and proddings, unless you're unbelievably stupidly good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look at this. Like, coincidentally, he's going to be able to, to keep this alive, but... Really, truly, honestly, like, these units, if they had arrived a little earlier, these would have been absolutely free kills for Zerg. So then, Terran does another thing I really like. Notice, notice, he killed off all that stuff here, and where does he go? Back towards his rally point. You don't always have to go all the way back to your rally point in full, but, you know, like, for instance, if you attack here... Send your units up here, and then send your rallied units also up here. STX did the same, did something similar. He pulled back to his rally point. It's a little bit of the as extreme of a retreat as you can do. But look, he's going to pull back here. He's going to join these units together, and then he's probably going to go for a relatively big push. Yeah! Oh, that looks so beautiful. Oh, oh, mm, yeah, good boy, STX. That's what I'm talking about. That was so awesome. Oh my god, are you seeing how great I feel as a result of that? Oh, that's awesome. No one gets excited about unit movement anymore. How tragic. People want to go, oh, look at that micro. Oh, what you're making. Oh, mass phoenixes. That's a weird mix. People like the obviously neat stuff. But you know what? That, my friends, is truly erotic. He just pulled everything back. Oh, literally, like, the last three minutes of movement has all been very, very well thought out ways of reinforcing his main push. <gasps> oh, my God. I even want to relook at it again. I'm making a big deal about this because no one gets excited about this when they watch the Ghosties play. And no one in particular gets excited about it when they play. Oh, man. So, we have STX. Oh, let's just go to the STX cam. cam. Let's not adulterate this with any of this vile garbage of liquid hate pros vision so he's gonna move back up here he's gonna move back up here because oh why why is it safe to move there because he scanned oh you're beautiful stx you are such a gorgeous man and then how's he gonna pull back he is not gonna try to dart all the way up here abandoning his units he's not gonna even cut along this path try to continue putting pressure on the right side he's gonna pull back here oh yeah look at him pulling back there regrouping that my friends is how you regroup and then he pokes out a little ways here he's gonna poke out a little bit he's gonna poke out and there's the scan a second scan stx oh Oh, oh, my back is arching just watching this guy regroup. And then the third one, okay, he did a scan here with his first units, pulled back. Did a scan here with his second group of units, pulled back. And now, ladies and gentlemen, comes push three. Oh, 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 oh a scan. Uh, oh, the watchtower. Oh, oh, my foot is cramping watching this guy. This is great. What beautiful, gorgeous, incredibly suave amazing placement oh yeah get that vision yeah get it stx that's what i'm talking about this is what makes really like the s class players light years ahead of the a class players it is because they do this sort of thing now now he's starting to position his stuff out people can easily reinforce the front like this they totally get that but my god all those little movements right there they didn't seem so amazing but, oh, yeah, look at the scan up there. Look at how cautiously he's pushing forward. There's the scan over there. Yeah, it looks like you really do have the advantage, STX. And he pulls back again and regroups. Oh, yes. 
at no point in time were STX's units vulnerable. At no point in time could something be picked off. Oh, that's just exactly, exactly how you want to do it. And this actually, most people would consider the most boring part of the game. They would look at it and they would go, oh, he's just, he's kind of moving around. He's blah, blah, he's kind of darting here and there. But, oh my goodness, if you go to his camera and you actually see when he has vision of what, you can see exactly why some of those attacks worked nicely and exactly why some of them didn't work. And I'm especially pointing out this part where there's really no conflict going on, so all of you can truly go, oh, STX, you are a god among men. Enjoy that top spot at the ladder. I'll wave at you adoringly, because you deserve it, baby. That is exactly why he is so good. And then, of course, CG got tanks, uh, and there's the good game. <laughs> I love how I paused it, went on a huge long monologue about why he is so beautiful, and it's just like, GG, dunsies. Um, and so I want to once again talk about the two parts to that game, the two pieces. Piece one, uh, STX, you're, yeah, you're getting barracks and, and tanks and medevacs. You're getting upgrades, upgrades for the Marines and the, and the tanks. Which, in the second half of the game, oh, yeah, totally, those were game changers, man. Those were really pushing pushing the forefront. That's good, good, good. But, 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 in that first half of the game, a lot of rearrangement errors. A lot of them. Getting stim and combat shield really fast and then sitting. Well, huh, Sean, could they have possibly been used for defense? He already had really good defense. Unless he has experienced a few situations that really made him go, God, I just desperately need stim. Other, if that, unless that is the case, it is an egregious error. He could have gotten all five of those barracks up and add on a lot faster. Getting the starport way fast when he didn't have the gas ugh, could have delayed the starport or gotten an add on later. All his upgrades. Good timing, like the upgrades, but cut into the gas, shouldn't have gotten that second factory at that time. And if he rearranges all those things and really fleshes it out, he can be as amazing as he was positioning-wise in the second half, but have a bigger army faster, exactly the way we want it. Let's take some questions and wrap this nice, short, hardcore daily up. Bam! So, um, I'm going to drink so. Hmm. Ah. So Pack of Highly says, Dear Day 9, why is getting a larger army better than getting an upgraded army? In my mind, the upgrades should make up for the difference in army size. I hope I didn't, I, I didn't say this improperly. You will actually get a bigger army with the exact same upgrades if you rearrange things properly. Let me give an example. Very simple. Let's say our end goal is to have stim, Combat shield, three barracks. One with a tech lab, one with a reactor, and another one with a reactor. Three barracks, combat, stim, tech lab, reactor, reactor. Let's say that's our goal. If we do the following, think about what happens, right? Or, uh, um, if we do the following, uh, we get the, we, we go barracks, and then we get stim, and then we get a barracks, and another barracks, and then we get combat shield, and we get the reactor, and the reactor we're probably going to have about eight Marines and both upgrades. Well, I, I want to be pushing out when I have 16 Marines. So then you have to sit around and wait. la di da di da di da di da And then you get all of that at around 5 minutes and 30 seconds. That's what happens. But um, uh, 5 minutes and 30 seconds is number I'm pulling off the top of my head. I know it's off, but let's just take 5 minutes and 30 seconds to have 16 Marines with combat shield and stim. That is the timing push that you want. But now, if you went barracks with tech lab, then barracks with reactor, then barracks with reactor, and then got stim, and then got combat shield, right when you hit 16 marines, you will get the upgrade for tech lab, you will get the upgrade for combat shield. So again, in both of these examples, you have 16 marines with stim, with combat shield. But because you got your barracks before your tech lab, you get the 16 marines a little bit faster. That is exactly why I'm saying delay those upgrades. Because, for instance, the Siege Tank is the most obvious example. A lot of Terran players get three, four, five Siege Tanks and then push out with Siege. If you get Siege Mode and the, your first Siege Tank at the same time, that's 100 Minerals and 100 Gas, at the, when you could have been spending that on, like, another Barracks. 
But if you build three tanks and then get siege mode, and then when your fourth and a half tank pops out, then you push, you could have gotten other things earlier on. So I hope that's clear, that you still want to get all the upgrades. But the problem is what people tend to do is get the upgrades way earlier than they need to, and then they're sitting around. They know they need a big army, but they're sitting around waiting. You want to get those upgrades as late as you possibly can and still do the same pushes that you want. So, Day 8. says, Dear Professor Day 9, Hey Pro invested quite a bit into Ultras. Do you feel it could have done better by spending a bit less and more mixing up with Lings, Banelings, and Roaches? Yeah, I, I do agree. Um, I, 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 and by the way, when you say invested in Ultras, I don't mean like I saw 8 Ultras on the field. Um, um, like, well, that, that's a too big of an investment. Those should be Roaches or Zerglings instead. Instead, what I was seeing is that he was getting Ultras really fast, and at a pretty key point in the game, he didn't really have many units. And you'll note that in that game, the Ultras kind of came out right as the expansions were dying, and a lot of times what people will say to themselves is, oh, the Ultras came out right as my expansions were dying. I have to get Ultralisks faster, <laughs> so that way I get them out before my expansions start dying. Um... I want to suggest the opposite in many circumstances to say, wow, I got the Ultralisk right, or right when I got the Ultralisk, everything was dying. I should never be at a point where everything's kind of dying. Let me just have a bigger army so I can stay alive and I get those Ultras later. I actually like that quite a bit more. Plus, your other units are faster. And if you have Expos on opposite corners, you want to have a fast mix. Um, so let us see here. <laughs> the Red Wizard, Dear D9, do you know when the next SE2 installment is coming out? No, I have no idea, and I hope it's not soon, because I don't have enough effort to do yet another launch party. But when, of course, Heart of Swarm comes out, we'll, we'll no doubt do another little countdown party. Yeah! Yes, indeed. So, um, Scythe, C-Y-T-H-E, says, Day 9, I'm frequently losing to early pushes or hard pressure, which prevents me from droning very much, if at all. How can I hold off, stay up in economy, while still defending constant brutal pressure? You need to have set times when you are making drones and set times when you are not making drones. It is really easy to take an expansion and then for your macro to slip and for you to go, I have 1,600, 300. Let me make a lot of roaches and lings. And then meanwhile, your expansion only ever has like four or five drones. And then you eventually lose to a push and you think, well, when could I have made drones? I was making units all the time. Create very set points, like between 30 and 38 food, only making drones. Then between 40 and 50 food, making round of zerglings. Between 50 and 70 food, only making drones. Or you can do other triggers for yourself. You'll say something like, I'm only making Zerglings when my layer is morphing. Or I'm only making drones when my layer is morphing. Or right when my Roach Worm finishes, I'm going to make drones until I start my Banelink Nest. And then I'm going to make uh, Zerglings. Create these times for yourself and then adjust them. Because um, without specifically knowing what push is killing you, I can't comment on, oh yeah, you're obviously getting this specific drone. But really, the correct way to be losing is for him to attack you and for you to go, oh my god, I don't have any units. What you don't want to have happen is where you have tons of units, tons of units, tons of units, and then you lost and said, well, I never had any time to make drones. That's why all these replays of Idra losing, where he has like 80 food, 70 of which is drones, and a push just kills him seemingly easily. People tend to go, oh, Idra says he's vulnerable. No way, Idra's losing the correct way, because then when he backs off to 65 to 60 drones or something like that, Holy cow, is it ever unbelievably impossible to beat him? And then people go, oh, well, he's a robot. He just practices all day. Come on, man. Give the guy some credit. He's really squeezing those drones out. You should too. So we're going to take one more question. I'm going to take this question because it's so important that people not think like this. It is so important. Question by Freak Sheet. It says, Day 9, considering the amount of money he spent... On wasting Ultralists, wouldn't Broodlords have been far more effective seeing as the Siege Tanks could have, fi could have fired on his own units? There is an enormous amount of difference between wouldn't having Broodlords right now versus let me go get Broodlords. No, the phrase, get Broodlords, 
get. The word get in that circumstance encompasses getting a spire, upgrading into a greater spire, um, getting a hive, the infestation pit for the hive, making a lot of corruptors, then spending all the, the time getting the brood lords, and also not dying this whole time and having enough gas to support corruptor, brood lord, and whatever else you want. Which is probably going to be quite a bit of ground units. Sure, if six brood lords existed all of a sudden, just magically appear, they would have done a lot of damage. But of course, Terran. Uh, anytime you're you're gonna go for broodlords in that spot, it's gonna really really dig in to all the rest of your army, and then STX just kills you sooner. And then sure you get the broodlords, but by getting the broodlords, you died with all your expansions a lot earlier. I would actually say that the ultralisks um, weren't were exactly a waste. They just kind of came out right when everything was falling apart. Um, if Hey Pro had timed his defense better. He maybe could have done the identical thing and been all right. Um, I think maybe should have delayed a little bit. Theoretically, he could have accelerated it and done a little bit more counterattacking, other sorts of things. But um, only time I would probably be like, yeah, I like that mindset of getting the Broodlords is if Corruptors are really lying around. Or if you have huge amounts of time, like tremendous, tremendous amounts of time, such as if he's really distracted from drops and counterattacks and mutilus harass. If you're just kind of sitting, chilling passively, you're inviting Terran to be aggressive and try to battle your very, very nice defense. And I think Haypro did a pretty good job, but, you know, I think he could have won if he just controlled a little better. Either way, I, I chose this because Haypro actually just played very, very well, and STX played very weller. So that's gonna wrap up the daily. I'm gonna go get some rice with soy sauce. I have a rice cooker. Mmm, rice with soy sauce. No daily tomorrow. I'll be at MLG. I'll be flying to Texas in Dallas. I'll be flying to Dallas in Texas. And then I will be broadcasting Friday straight through to Sunday. I will backhand the whole weekend with casting. And then I'll be back on Monday for a good week of just more games like this where we look at good players doing solid shit, talk about why it's awesome, and we will almost certainly be having Idra for a friend day Wednesday. He was going to be coming on today, but of course he is driving to Dallas. I don't know why, um, but I'll, I'll definitely laugh at him when I see him in Dallas. So thanks so much for tuning in, guys. You all look very pretty today.